Hi, my name is Magnar Nordahl. I'm an airline pilot with interest in aviation history. Some months ago, I posted a video about the MiG-21, and it became very popular and it's now one of the most viewed MiG-21 videos on YouTube. To be honest, I'm surprised that so many people have seen the video, but this is how the metrics with YouTube works. When many people watch, even more start to watch the video. So, thank you to all of you, I'm very grateful. And with many views, follows many comments, even from pilots who have flown the MiG-21. I really appreciate that. Some viewers have pointed out that the MiG-21 of the Indian Air Force shot on an F-16 from the Pakistan Air Force. And this is the theme of this video. On the 27th of February 2019, Air combat took place over Kashmir. Both sides agreed that two fighters were shot down. Pakistan claims they shot down two Indian fighters, one MiG-21 and one Sukhoi Su-30. India acknowledged that one of their MiG-21s was shot down, but not the Sukhoi-30. Instead, India claims that they shot down a Pakistani F-16. So, who's right? One thing is clear, the MiG-21 was shot down, it is well documented and the pilot lived to tell the story. But there is no trace of the second aircraft and its pilot. Nothing. Somebody is hiding the truth. The problem is that both countries, India and Pakistan, have a press freedom index graded as difficult. And in a war, the first casualty is the truth. Therefore, Published information will not always be objective. I have studied many articles and videos with this in mind and done my best to find the facts. Sometimes it is silence that gives the clues. I have a list of my references in the description below. There are many of them. In this video, I mention Indian and Pakistani names. And some of them are very difficult for me to pronounce, so if I do it wrong, please forgive me for that. And here is something very important. Before you start to write in the comment section below, please do respect the views of other people. This channel is not a forum to attack others. People have different opinions, and that must be respected. And even if I have put a lot of effort into finding the facts, I might still get some details wrong. Therefore, if you disagree with me, please tell me so and present your facts and sources. I will appreciate that. Maybe I can make a new video. But if you condemn or ridicule other people or present opinions and rumors as facts, then I will not hesitate to delete your comment and even ban you from the channel. I am the dictator of the channel. Okay? There are many so-called experts out there claiming that it is impossible for a MiG-21 to shoot on an F-16. Therefore, they conclude India couldn't shoot on the Pakistani fighter. Yes, the MiG-21 is a third-generation interceptor developed in the 1950s while the F-16 is a fourth-generation fighter from the 1970s. The F-16 has a better radar and missiles with a longer range than the MiG-21, and it can fly circles around the MiG. Therefore, the F-16 has the advantage, right? But it's not that easy. In modern air combat, the airframe is just one piece in the big picture. And India's MiG-21s are the Bison variant which is upgraded with 4th generation avionics. Let me tell you what happened when F-15s from the US Air Force visited India in 2004 for an exercise. The F-15 is the most successful air superiority fighter with an air-to-air -air kill rate of 102 to 0. In the air combat exercises with India, they faced Mirage 2000, Sukhoi-30, which is a two-seat derivative of the Sukhoi-27. This is a formidable opponent of the F-15. But the biggest surprise for Americans was the MiG-21 Bison. Here is what happened. 
The Sukhoi 30s would, from a long distance, use the powerful radars to get a picture of the tactical situation. This information was then relayed to the Bisons, and they kept the radars off. Therefore, they emitted few or no electronic signals that could alert the F-15s. In addition, where the Bison equipped with the Elta 8222 jamming pods. This, combined with the small size of the MiG, all of them to come within visual range before being detected by the Americans. And that's not all. The Bison is equipped with two R-73 infrared guided missiles that can be fired against targets 90 degrees off the center line, thanks to a helmet-mounted targeting system. Standard armament also includes two long-range R-77 radar-guided missiles. The MiG-21 was originally designed to ambush American bombers, but it is fully capable to ambush fighters as well. The US Air Force had learned a lesson, and it didn't take long before they installed Elta A222 jamming pods on their aggressor aircraft. Before the incident over Kashmir in 2019, the only reported loss of an F-16 in air-to-air -air combat happened in 1996, when a Greek Mirage 2000 shot on a Turkish two-seat F-16. One of the two pilots was killed. Initially, both countries acknowledged this. But when Turkey, on behalf of the family of the deceased pilot, threatened to sue Greece for shooting down the F-16, Greece claimed that it was not shot down, but caught fire by itself. This shows how difficult it is to assess claims given by both sides in a conflict. And this brings us to the story about the F-16 that was shot down by a MiG-21. Or was it? Who can we trust in this story? Let's follow the evidence and see where it can take us. The Kashmir conflict is a territorial conflict over the Kashmir region. On this map, Pakistan controls the green area, India controls the blue area, and China controls the yellow area. The border between the areas controlled by Pakistan and India is called the line of control. It serves as a de facto border. Kashmir has been disputed since the partition of British India in 1947 when Pakistan and India become self-governing nations. Two wars have been fought between Pakistan and India over Kashmir, and there have been numerous armed confrontations. The conflict escalated on the 14 of February 2019, when a suicide bomber killed 40 members of the Indian Central Reserve Police Force in the Pulwama district. The militant group yaish e mohammed claimed responsibility for the attack. India made Pakistan responsible because yaish e mohammed was based in Pakistan, but Pakistan denied any involvement. India was determined to revenge the terror attack, and 12 days later, in the early hours on the 26th of February, they launched an airstrike against a target near Balakot in Pakistan. India claimed that the target was a training camp belonging to yaish e mohammed The attack was carried out by 12 Mirage 2000s, armed with 1,000 kilobombs. India claimed that the attack was a success and that more than 200 terrorists were killed. Indian media claimed that the attack destroyed up to 80% of the buildings and that Indian authorities had their own satellite images and other data to prove this. The problem is that those images have not been published. Yellow card to India. Pakistan denied that the target was a terrorist camp and that the Indian fighter bombers were intercepted by Pakistani fighters and forced to drop the bombs in open land and retreat. So, what proof do we have? Infrared images taken before and after the attack shows three areas near the target where the vegetation has been damaged. Those areas are impact craters from four bombs. Two of the bombs impacted close to each other. On the 8th of March, 10 days after the attack, European Space Images published high-resolution satellite images of the target area. 
there are no signs of damage to the buildings. The Mirages dropped 1,000 kilo bombs, which will have resulted in considerable damage if they had hit the buildings. On the 28th of February, the day after the attack, Al Jazeera reported that four bombs had hit a forest and a field near a Quran education school, a madrasa. The header picture in the article shows a signboard pointing towards the school. The signboard states that the leader is Masoud Asar. He is the founder of Yaish i Mohammed. Local people Al Jazeera spoke to gave conflicting information. Some said it is a religious school. Some said there was no activity there, and others said that it was a training camp for religious fighters. In the article, Al Jazeera suggests that, quote, the school was an active recruitment center, if not a training site for Yaish i Mohammed. On the 2nd of March, CNBC reported that, according to anonymous sources, up to 35 dead bodies had been transported out of the site. The dead people, they said, included several individuals who had earlier served in the Pakistan's military. But all the sources disputed this. Therefore, the article doesn't give any conclusive proof in either direction. More important, journalists were denied access to the site. And we have to ask why. If the site had not been damaged, it would have been a propaganda victory for Pakistan to show it to the journalists, right? So, did the Pakistan authorities hide something there? Yellow card to Pakistan. It would take more than six weeks before observers were allowed to visit the site. This happened on the 10th of April, when the Pakistani army arranged a visit for foreign journalists and diplomats. The journalist reported that there was no sign of damage to the buildings or recent repair work. Inside the main building were the children studying the Holy Quran, like what you will expect to see in a Quran school, a madrasa. But this visit was staged by the army and the journalists were only allowed to speak to people appointed by the army. India expected Pakistan would retaliate the next morning. The tensions were high, and by a mistake, Indian air defenses shot down an Indian MIL MI-17 transport helicopter, killing all six people on board and a civilian on the ground. This footage of the wreck will soon appear in media all over the world, but very often with the wrong headlines. An investigation revealed that the IFF system on board the helicopter was switched off, and there were vital gaps in communication and coordination between the ground staff and the crew of the helicopter. A military tribunal was raised against two officers responsible for this tragic mistake. The Pakistani aircraft attacked after sunrise. According to Pakistani sources, it was decided to attack at daylight, as the Pakistan Air Force wanted to demonstrate they could attack any target at their own will. The attack force consisted of Mirage 3, JF-17, F-16, supported by a sub ari and a Falcon 20 used to jam Indian communications. They will attack military installations on the Indian side, but since the Indian attack the night before had not resulted in fatalities, the Pakistani fighters would drop their bombs off the targets. India scrambled Mirage 2000, Sukhoi 30 and MiG-21 B sound fighters. And what happened next is still disputed. Pakistan claimed to have shot down two Indian fighters, first on Sukhoi 30, and then one MiG-21. India confirmed they had lost one MiG-21. Its pilots was missing. And they claimed to have shot on one Pakistani F-16. Shortly after the incident, the Director General of the Inter-Services Public Relations, ISPR, Asif Kafur, tweeted that the Pakistan Air Force had shot down two Indian aircraft. 
One aircraft fell inside Pakistan-controlled Kashmir, and the other fell inside Indian-controlled Kashmir. One Indian pilot was arrested by Pakistan troops, while two were in the area. During a press conference an hour after the first tweet, Gafur said, quote, Our ground forces arrested two pilots. One of them was injured and has been shifted to CMH, Combined Military Hospital. Gafur also assured that no F-16 of the Pakistan Air Force had been shot down, since F-16s were not used in combat in that area. And Wing Commander Norman Ali Khan was credited for shooting down a MiG-21. Squadron leader Hassan Siddiqui was credited for shooting down the Sukhoi-30. On this photograph, which was taken after the incident, they are posing in front of an F-16. So what do you say about that, Gafur? And after the press conference, Gafur informed journalists that the pilot in the military hospital had died. Later in the evening, Gafur tweeted the following. There is only one pilot in the Pakistan army's custody. Wing Commander Abinandan is being treated as per norms of military ethics. So, what happened with the pilot who died in the hospital? If he was from India, wouldn't India claim that he was missing? And wouldn't Pakistan return his body to India? But India claimed that only one pilot was missing, and that was Wing Commander Abinandan Vaitaman. He was the pilot of the MiG-21 that was shot down. He ejected safely and landed in Pakistan-controlled Kashmir. A mob of angry villagers beat him up before he was handed over to the Pakistan army. Abinandan was released three days later. India claimed that it was Abinandan that shot down the F-16 shortly before he was shot down. Five weeks later, on the 5th of April, Gafur posted a grainy picture of the remains of four missiles claimed to be recovered from the wreck of Abinandan's MiG-21. This, Gafur claimed, proved that Abinandan did not shoot down a Pakistani F-16. The questions are, one, why did it take five weeks to collect the missiles? And two, why does the R-73 on the left side appear to have very little damage? The missiles to the right are severely damaged, as you can expect in a crash and a following fire. The R-73 to the right is from the wreck of the aircraft. You can see the seeker head on this picture. In my opinion, this doesn't prove anything, because the picture came too late and the missiles are not identified with serial numbers. Yellow card to Pakistan. India has a different story. The fight started when Pakistani fighters launched missiles against one or more Sukhoi 30s, but none of them were hit. Later, India will show a part of a missile that supposedly had been fired against one of the Sukhois. It was an AIM-120, also known as a AMRAM, Advanced Medium Range Air-to-Air -air Missile. Pakistan has only one aircraft that can carry the AMRAM, and that is the F-16. Pakistan denied that the F-16s had been in the area that day. I will come back to that later. In addition to ground radars, India had a Barrier A-50 Falcon AVAX aircraft in the area. Based on electronic signatures from the aircraft, the AVAX was able to identify three groups of Pakistan Air Force fighters along the border. Two groups with F-16s and one group with the JF-17. The JF-17 is a multi-role combat aircraft developed jointly by China and Pakistan. Abinandan was the leader of a formation of two MiG-21 Bisons. Their call signs were Alpha-1 and Alpha-2. They were directed towards the Pakistani fighters by the ground radar and or the AVAX. When they approached the line of control, the Indian fighters were asked to turn cold, which means to turn back. Alpha 2 turned back, but Abinandan continued. One F-16 launched a missile against Alpha 2, but missed. 
Ab in anderen got a lock on that F-16, a Nordstrand R-73 missile. Since this missile is heat-seeking, it doesn't emit electronic signals, and the pilot of the F-16 may not have been aware of the missile. The missile hit its target. Abinandam turned off and then east. A second F-16 launched a missile against Abinandam's MiG and damaged the rear section of his aircraft. Abinandam ejected safely and was arrested by the Pakistani army. In April, the Indian Air Force released images they claimed was from the AVAX. The images show that Abinandam's MiG-21 closed in on an F-16, which later disappeared from the radar. Another F-16 closed in on Abinandam's MiG, and less than a minute after the first F-16 disappeared from the radar, the MiG-21 vanished as well. India claims that data from a ground-based low-level targeting radar confirms this. Both aircraft disappeared from the radar screens when they were over Pakistan-controlled Kashmir. This information appears to be correct, but we need more facts before we can draw any conclusions. This incident caused worldwide attention. Many journalists reported that Pakistan claimed that they had shot down two Indian fighters. Pakistan released footage of the remains of the MiG-21 surrounded by Pakistani soldiers. The pictures were distributed worldwide by news media, together with footage of the Indian helicopter wreck. It is evident that it is a helicopter because you can see two of the rotor blades. But journalists are not aviation experts, and the coverage gave the impression that one of the Indian fighters had crashed in Indian-controlled Kashmir. There is no doubt that the MiG-21 had been shot down, but there is no trace of the other fighter. If the second fighter was a Sukhoi-30 that had fallen down in India-controlled Kashmir, I'm pretty sure that footage of the wreck had been spread on social media, like the pictures of the wreck of the helicopter. If the second fighter was an Indian Sukhoi-30 that had fallen down in Pakistan-controlled Kashmir, India would have reported the aircraft and the pilots missing. That didn't happen. Therefore, it's plausible that the second fighter was a Pakistani F-16. This picture has been used as a proof that the second fighter was an F-16. It shows Pakistani soldiers and a part of an aircraft. It has been claimed that the part is from a F-110 engine produced by General Electric. There are two problems with that. First of all, the grid structure on the engine is on the outside. The structure on the part is on the inside. Secondly, Pakistan Air Force has F-16A and B, Block 15, and F-16C and D, Block 52. All of them have the F-100 engines. What we see is a part of the fuselage of an aircraft. This picture shows the wreck of a MiG-21 bis that was shot down in Croatia in 1991. It's a good match. Therefore, we can conclude that this does not prove that the part is from an F-16. Pakistan received the first F-16s in the 1980s. They were A and B models and were later upgraded to Block 15 standard. In the 1990s, United States embargoed an order for 28 new F-16s over concerns about Pakistan's nuclear weapons program. The relationship between the countries improved after 9-11, and in 2010, Pakistan received a batch of F-16, C and D models, Block 52. They are more advanced than the older models, and were delivered on the condition that Pakistan paid for a US technical security team to be based on the Air Force bases where the Block 52s were deployed. The team should ensure that the aircraft were not modified and that the technology was not shared with unauthorized parties, for example China. Furthermore, the contract restricted use of the fighters to self-defense over its own territory. I'm not sure whether those restrictions were imposed on the older F-16A and Bs. 
On the 4th of April, did the website Foreign Policy claim that US officials had counted the Pakistani F-16s and that none of them were missing? Four days later was it reported that the United States Department of Defense was not aware of any counting of Pakistani F-16s. But the Department of Defense will never comment on details regarding government-to-government -government agreements anyway. Regarding the picture of the Amram, the serial number is clearly visible on the photo. I'm sure Pentagon knows where the missile came from, because in August 2019, a top American diplomat sent a written reprimand to the chiefs of the Pakistan Air Force, accusing them for misusing US-supplied F-16s and jeopardizing their shared security. What are the conclusions from this? I will say it's probably that Pakistan Air Force operated F-16s in the area where the two fighters were shot down. But the US connection doesn't give any proof whether an F-16 was shot down or not. Next, we have videos recorded by civilians on both sides of the line of control. I have not been able to get approval to show them, and therefore I will present stills from the videos. There are links to the videos in the description below, so you can watch them in full. What the videos show are two different aircraft falling from the sky. The smoke patterns are clearly different, and therefore we can conclude that there are two different aircraft. A group from India has analyzed some of the videos and been able to identify the location they have been recorded from and the direction they were filming in. The findings are published by Samir Yoshi in the print. Some of the claims in his article cannot be called proof, but the work with the videos is impressive. It adds to the credibility that the contact information of the people involved is published. Furthermore, they show clearly how they have done the calculations, leaving it to everyone to challenge their findings. Starting with the shoot-down of the MiG-21, here are two stills from a video filmed in Kuirata in Pakistan-controlled Kashmir. The white dot on the top is identified as the parachute of the pilot, as the descent rate is very slow. The bright white dot is burning debris of the aircraft. The rate of descent is very high. And the next pictures are from a video near the crash site and show the final moments of the MiG. This was the nose section and the main body of the aircraft. There is no doubt that this was a MiG-21 from the Indian Air Force. The tail section landed some distance away. And on the wreck of the tail you can clearly see the Indian flag on what was the vertical stabilizer. This is the easy part because both sides agree about what happened. The second aircraft is a different story. A video recorded from Tanamandi on the Indian side of the line of control shows a falling smoke pattern resembling a tadpole. A second video recorded from Sharoy on the Pakistani side shows the same tadpole pattern. This is not the MiG. So it has to be either the Sukhoi-30 from India or the Pakistani F-16. According to the article in the print, the aircraft fell down north of the observer inside Pakistan controlled Kashmir. I will encourage you to check the article yourself. At the end of the video is a small helicopter heading towards the area where the aircraft fell down. It might be a Bell 206 Jet Ranger from the Pakistan Army. Both fighters fell down not too far away from each other. This still photo is from a video that was recorded shortly after Wing Commander Abinandan has been handed over to the Pakistani Army. Some of the men were shouting Dosra Pakto, which means catch the other. Apparently, they had seen a second parachute in the area. And this still photo is from an interview made with a man who assisted in catching Abinandan. The man said that they hit him badly and then handed him over to the army. More interestingly, he claimed that he had seen three parachutes. 
Does that prove that it was a Sukhoi 30 that was shot down? After all, it is a two-seater. But as I said, if the Sukhoi 30 had been shot down, India would have reported the aircraft and its crew missing, just as I did with Abhinandan and his MiG. And Pakistan would have handed them over to India, even if they had died. It could also have been a two-seat F-16. Pakistan Air Force operates a relatively high number of two-seat F-16s, B and D models. They have the same capability as the single-seat variants, but with less internal fuel capacity. So, what conclusions can we draw out of this? During the ISPR press conference, Gafur stated that the ground forces had arrested two pilots and that one of them was injured and taken to a military hospital. After the press conference, he told journalists that the pilot in the hospital had died. And later, he stated that they had only one in custody, Wing Commander Abhinandan. Because Garfour changed the story several times, I do not find him credible. India, on the other hand, acknowledged the loss of an aircraft and a missing pilot. And India didn't change the story. Based on this, I find it plausible that Abhinandan shot down a Pakistan F-16. But if Pakistan was an F-16, then they must have covered up the story and the loss of the aircraft and one or two pilots. What do you think? Please leave your thoughts below. And remember what I said in the beginning of the video. Respect the views of other people. Okay? And that's all for this time. Please support my channel by sharing with your friends and all that. Thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day and happy learning.